Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 226, Sweet 16. It had been a few months since the Great Railway Show had ended on the mainland, and Sir Topham Hatt's railway was just about back to normal. The trees were returning to Gordon's Hill, the last international engines were saying farewell. It was a time of change. Recently, the Sodor Sweet Shop had expanded with the addition of Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory, and Sir Topham Hatt needed an engine to take charge of the new responsibilities. How about you, Wilbert? You're a hard worker. I could really use a saddle tank engine like yourself to keep up with the demand. What say you trade the conifers for some candy? Wilbert chuckled. As honored as I am, sir, I would prefer to stay in the forest. The only sticky stuff I need in my life is tree sap, thank you very much. But I do know of another saddle tank engine that is looking for work. Why, that's perfect! I trust your judgment, Wilbert, so give me all of the details and I'll have him here in a jiffy. All right, if you say so. A few days later, a new engine had arrived from the mainland. Welcome to the island of Sodor. I am Sir Topham Hatt, the controller of the Northwestern Railway. And what might your name be? Sixteen, grumbled the engine. Oh, come on. We're a lot more informal here on Sodor. You needn't impress us with that number as a name thing. Come along, what's your real name? The engine looked at Wilbert. It's 16, sir, he whispered. His real name is 16. Oh, you're serious? Well, I do apologize. Uh, welcome to the railway, 16. Now I have a very special job for you. Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory is one of our newest additions, and I need an engine to run the area and keep it in tip-top shape. Sound like a plan? I like working around metal, he grunted. Uh, beg pardon, gasped Sir Topham Hatt. I said I like working around metal. Steel, sparks, fire, lava. Oh, uh, very interesting. But you see, I don't need you to work in a smelter's yard. I need you to work at Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Can you do that? I guess, grumbled Sixteen. Very well, then. I will see to it that... Uh, oh, he's puffing away. All right, then. The engines looked at Wilbert. Well, I didn't say he was my friend. He's a saddle tank engine, just like Sir Topham Hatt requested. And I certainly didn't say he was a hard worker. And Wilbert was right. Sixteen was different, to say the least. He was grumpy and disinterested and really didn't like performing certain tasks. So you're the new chocolate factory engine, asked the dairy manager. Hmm, you'll do, I suppose, as long as you don't mind getting sticky and dirty. But Sixteen did mind. The chocolate melted in the hot sun. Barrels of milk spilled onto the track. It was a messy job, and before long he'd soon had enough of it. I won't do it, he grumbled. Go find yourself another engine and he puffed away, leaving a trainload of chocolate and a very unhappy dairy manager behind. What a waste of time, said Sixteen to himself. As soon as I find that rolling bridge, I am out of here. Just then, he came upon the Sodor ironworks. Sixteen gazed at the tall machinery. He heard the crunching of metal. He smelled the flames in the furnace. It was beautiful. Ho, ho, now this, this is a steelworks, he chuckled. I'm right at home. Say goodbye to Mr. Lolly's Chocolate Factory, or whatever his name was. I could work here forever. You better keep on moving, said Airy. The ironworks isn't for steam engines. At least, not in your current state. What are you talking about? I'd be a great fit here. Look, I've worked with steel my entire life. You've got a great setup here, but if there's one thing I'd recommend... Keep your thoughts to yourself and your wheels moving, grunted Bert. We don't need your help. The steamies that enter here, they never leave. 
Ah, a forever job. I like your thinking. When do I start? Get out! Sixteen hightailed it out of the ironworks and didn't stop until he found a shed where he could catch his breath. News had spread about his first day on Sodor, and Sir Topham Hatt was not impressed. Sixteen, I brought you here to work at Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Now if you cannot do that one simple task, I will send you away. Do you understand? Sixteen groaned. He didn't like the job, but he didn't have a choice. The next morning, the dairy manager was waiting for him. You have a lot of time to make up, Sixteen. First, you need to get rid of that spoiled milk you left sitting in the sun yesterday. Then you will deliver these boxcars to the docks. And those trucks are in the wrong siding. Furthermore, and the list grew longer and longer. Finally, Sixteen had reached his limit. Fine, yes sir, he said at last, and he coupled up to the milk tankers. I want that spoiled milk dumped somewhere far away so I don't have to smell it. I don't care where you do it, just get it out of this yard. Sixteen smiled. He had the perfect place in mind. If those diesels can't handle the heat, they better get out of the ironworks. Here's a little parting gift courtesy of Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Cry over this, will ya? And Sixteen dumped the tankers in a siding. They split open and the foul liquid began to mix with the heat of the foundry. In a few minutes, the stench is gonna be unbearable, he chuckled. Let's add some chocolate to our dessert of the day, shall we? Sixteen ran back to the chocolate factory and puffed in with the boxcars just in time. The ironworks was reeking of boiling dairy. Ari and Bert had been sleeping and they didn't know what was going on, but they couldn't stand the smell any longer. Who put those leaky tankers over there? shouted Bert. You again? Move your train and get out of here before we turn you into tank engine stew. Cry me a chocolate river, laughed Sixteen, and he puffed away, leaving the boxcars sitting on the points. Sixteen thought he was being clever, but he was obviously causing incredible amounts of confusion and delay. Ari and Bert eventually freed themselves from the siding, but they smelled so horrible that Sir Topham had ordered them to the washdown at once. The milk had been lost, the boxcars were destroyed, and Sixteen was at the center of it all. I've seen a lot of engines on my railway over the years, said Sir Topham Hatt, but you are without a doubt one of the worst engines to ever come to Sodor. You've sabotaged the ironworks and lost resources on behalf of Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Do you think any good was going to come of this? Sixteen shrugged. He didn't know and he didn't care. For what it's worth, sir, Ari and Bert really did need a washdown, quipped Henry. Sir Topham Hatt rolled his eyes. I'm sending you away, Sixteen. You are clearly not a good fit for Sodor, but I do know of a steelworks on the mainland that is willing to give you another chance. Merlin here will escort you when you're ready. Sixteen didn't need any coaxing. He puffed away without a word to anyone. Well, that didn't go over well, whispered Wilbert. I thought you knew that engine, laughed Henry. What made you recommend him to Sir Topham Hatt? I never said he was a good engine. He's a saddle tank, right, sir? I, I suppose I might have jumped at Wilbert's suggestion a bit too quickly. But still, that engine was nothing but trouble. I bet he has a history of not following the rules. Speaking of which, I have an excellent story about how Sixteen went cab over wheels, if you're interested. But Sir Topham Hatt shook his head. Another day, another time, Wilbert. Let's all be thankful that Sweet Sixteen left when he did. Who knows what chaos and calamity awaited us if we hadn't shown him the door. And the engines puffed away leaving Sir Topham Hatt to find a new engine to work at the chocolate factory. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 227, 
Bulstrode barges in. The great railway show was long over, but some of the international engines were still on Sodor. While many had decided to leave the island through Vickerstown and head home via the mainland, others were waiting at the docks for ships to take them back to their original railways. Oh, this is so tiring, said Ashima. They keep telling us the ships will arrive any day now, but that was months ago. I cannot wait any longer, murmured Ivan. The motherland needs me. Looks like I will be traveling home by rail. Farewell, comrades. I guess it is a time I leave it too, added Gina. Goodbye, Ashima. So long, Gina. Hopefully we can duel it out in another shunting competition in the future. While Ashima debated waiting for a ship to come get her, or heading home along the rails, there was one engine who refused to exit Sodor through Vickerstown. You see, I can't go home via the mainland. There's a big ocean in the way no matter where I puff. I got here on a ship and that's how I'm leaving. Yes, we understand, Vinny, but you don't have to tell us every single day. I know, but I'm just reminding you. Don't want you to think I'm a freeloader or something like that. Why, we would never even think of that, murmured Porter. Salty, on the other hand, wanted his docks free of any waiting engines. You don't have to leave yet, Vinny, but you can't stay here. You're taking up valuable space where we can put our trucks. Go find a shed somewhere. Hey, I'm the guest on this here island, and I'll sit where I want to, thank you very much. Salty, Porter, and Cranky were losing patience. We need a ship to arrive and take him away fast, sighed Arthur. The next day, things were looking up. Great news, Vinny, called Jack. I hear there's a cargo ship on the mainland that is heading to your railway. You can be home in a couple of weeks. Salty and Porter smiled. At last, they murmured. But Vinny was unfazed. No, thank you, he declined. I'll wait here for a soda cargo ship to take me home. But why? There's a perfectly good boat across the Vickerstown Bridge that has your name on it. That's just it, the Vickerstown Bridge. I don't trust that half-finished piece of scaffolding over there. You know what happened last time I tried to cross it? Yes, you fell into the river. Into the river? Is that normal? Is that expected? Of course not. The infrastructure on this railway is a travesty, and I will not be crossing any Vickerstown rolling bridge to get off this island. This is dreadful, muttered Porter. If only we had our own ship that could take Vinny away. Just then, Bolstrode arrived with a stack of cargo. Delivery from the mainland. You guys ordering bricks or something? These packages are heavy. Salty and Porter looked at each other and smiled. Bullstrode, they yelled. Meet us at the search and rescue center when you're done unloading those packages. A short while later, Bullstrode floated up to the track. What's all this about, he grunted. You're taking time out of my midday nap. We have a favor to ask, began Salty, and he explained the situation. Are you kidding me? No way. Absolutely not. I am a barge, not some luxury cruise liner. I transport cargo, not engines. Yes, we understand that, but you'll be doing the island of Sodor a great service if you take Vinny away. Huh, and what did this island ever give to me? Percy dumped a train full of trucks on me, and I got blamed for it. Sir Topham Hatt stuck me on a beach, and all of those little children, gah, I can still hear them yelling when I try to sleep at night. That's the thing, whispered Salty. You don't have to return to Sodor. Once you drop Vinny off, you're free to do what you want. Sir Topham Hatt will think you got lost or something. If you've ever wanted a way out, now's your chance, added Porter. Start a new life somewhere else. Reinvent yourself. Change your name to something less weird. The possibilities are almost endless. 
Bolstrode thought for a few moments. You make a very compelling case, he murmured. It's not like I enjoy taking packages to the mainland and back. Ugh, fine, I'll do it, but not a word to anybody else. I don't want Sir Topham Hat finding out I ditched his railway. I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. Salty and Porter smiled. The next day, Vinny was dozing quietly in his usual siding when... There she blows! It's a cargo ship, Vinny, and it's heading for your railway. Vinny awoke with a start. Huh? What? All right, my own private ship. Geez, about time. What, you head to the other island of Sodor by mistake or something? Now let's see what we're dealing with. Oh, come on. This ain't no cargo ship. This is some loser barge. I think I've even seen you here before. Hey, shouted Bolstrode. I'm your ride back to your railway, so you better be nice. Fine, all right. Let's get this show on the road or the water or whatever. But Cranky soon ran into trouble. Um, Salty, Porter, where is Vinny's tender going to fit? The two engines looked at each other. We, we didn't really think that one through. It's okay. We'll send it along with the next ship. Best you get a head start home. Farewell. All right, let's go then. Bye, Island of Soda. Or, if I could rename you, Island of Loser. And Bolstrode slowly steamed out of sight. A sigh of relief swept through the docks. At last, murmured Salty, he's gone. It took some unconventional thinking, but he's finally gone. But the adventure was just beginning for Bolstrode. So where am I taking you, anyway? You don't know where you're taking me? I thought you was headed back to my home railway. Oh, right. Let's go north for a little bit and see what we find. North? Why is you headed north? My railway is not in that direction. Listen, this is going to be a long journey if you don't keep quiet. Keep quiet? Do you know who you're talking to? This is Vinny, for goodness sakes. I've been waiting for the open ocean to get working on my entire life story. I'll be reciting it verbally so that I don't forget nothing. Bolstro rolled his eyes. If you talk the entire way home, we are going to have a problem. Back at the docks, Sir Topham Hatt had arrived to take a look around. Aha! I see Vinny has finally left the railway. About time, if you ask me. Looks like his ship finally took him home. You could say that, chuckled Porter. Just then, the engines heard a loud, disruptive noise coming from the ocean. What's that sound? asked Arthur. Sounds like two engines are arguing. Oh, no. Guys, you are not going to believe this, but it's Bulstrode and Vinny. They're heading back to Sodor. What? cried Salty. And they're coming in way too fast. Slow down, slow down. But it was too late. Salty and Porter raced aside as Bolstrode slammed into the pier and beached himself right in the middle of the track. What's all this about? cried Sir Topham Hatt. Bolstrode, what are you doing? I'm, I'm sorry, he panted, but I, I just couldn't take it. That engine, he wouldn't shut up. He started reciting his memoirs, and a barge can only go so fast. We were going to be stuck out there for months with no escape. I'd rather be swamped with cargo for the rest of my life than spend another minute with him. Sir Topham Hatt shook his head. You've done it again, Bulstrode. You've destroyed this pier, and we must repair Vinny before we can truly send him home. Best you get comfortable sitting on land once again. But it wasn't my idea, he stammered. It was Porter and Salty. They convinced me to do it. But Sir Topham Hatt walked away. Bolstrode knew he had really messed up this time. Hey, what about me? Where's my tender? Ow! Thank you! Sorry about all of this, said Porter. We really did want to help you out. 
Honestly, I should have expected something like this to happen. Just my luck, I suppose. You know what they say, life's a beach, right? And poor Bulstrode found that out just a few days later. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 228, Henry's Hill. One day, Henry was taking some tankers to the diesel works. When he stopped at Wellsworth Station for a quick rest, Edward was nowhere to be found. Oh, bother, he groaned. I don't think I can make it up Gordon's Hill without needing help. Let's wait here until Edward comes around. But he never did. Soon it was time for Henry to go. You'll want to get a move on, said the station master. The express is due any minute now, and while I don't mind you resting here, Gordon will definitely have a problem with you in the way. Henry sighed. Give it your best shot, said Reg. Who knows, you might just surprise yourself. Henry started slow and began the ascent. His train wasn't particularly heavy, but he didn't have the usual room to get up to speed. I'm almost there, he gasped. But then his wheels stopped and Henry was stuck just a few feet from the top. No worries, called his driver. Let's back down and try it again. Just then, Gordon puffed into the station, blocking Henry's line. What's all this about? Henry, what are you doing up there? I'm... I'm stuck, he gasped. Sorry, Gordon. Pah! You let three measly tankers hold you back. You're weak, Henry. Time to lay off the special coal. Henry rolled his eyes. Instead of criticizing me, why don't you give me a push? No chance. If I push you, then I might become stuck, and we wouldn't want that. No, of course not, muttered Henry. Well, let me back up so I can get another run at it. But Gordon couldn't. His train was so long that it stretched all the way back to the previous hill. He was stuck in the valley between the two slopes. Where is Edward when you need him? He doesn't have that much to do on his branch line, does he? In the meantime, the passengers had climbed out of the coaches. It was going to be a long wait. Look, said one of them, so that's why we're stopped. Henry stuck on Gordon's Hill. More like Henry stuck on Henry's Hill. <laughs> No, no, it's still my hill, chuckled Gordon. The name belongs to me. But the passengers wouldn't stop. Henry's Hill, Henry's Hill, Henry's Hill. Do you mind? It's my hill, Gordon's Hill. Now get back in the coaches. With the express stopped, Sir Topham Hat was called, and Bertie came to take Gordon's passengers away. What a conundrum. I don't think I've ever seen two trains stuck here. All right, Gordon, now that the coaches are lighter, you can surely give Henry a push now. Gordon was cross. His important train had been stopped, and the passengers had annoyed him. He angrily shoved Henry and himself over the top. Disgraceful, he barked that night. You embarrassed me, Henry, in front of my own passengers and coaches. I will never forgive you. Oh, settle down. I didn't mean to get stuck. Usually there's a backing engine there to help me over. Besides, your passengers are used to being delayed. How was today any different? The engines chuckled. It's not funny. I am an express engine. I don't deserve to get stopped on the main line, especially by a feeble engine pulling dirty tankers. You were out of line today. Me? Out of line? You're the one throwing a fit over all of this. Settle down, said Percy. It's all over. Tomorrow is a new day, and let's all look forward to that. But the next morning, Gordon was in for a rude surprise at Natford Station. Look, it's Henry, shouted the passengers. The famous engine for whom Henry's Hill is named after. Oh, not this again grumbled Gordon. It's my hill, Gordon's hill. Henry blushed. I haven't gotten this much attention in years, he said, and I didn't do it on purpose either. 
Gordon was fuming when it was time to leave. Henry's Hill, he muttered. Oh, the indignity. The other engines at the station thought it was very funny. You've certainly hit a nerve with Gordon, said Stanley. Who knew he was so protective of his hill? It's about time for a name change, added Hank. Gordon hasn't gotten stuck up there in years. It's way out of date, if you ask me. Gordon, meanwhile, couldn't hear the end of it. Everywhere he went, the passengers and engines reminded him of Henry's new landmark. He was becoming very tired of the whole situation. If I hear one more person mention Henry and his supposed hill, we are going to have a problem. But why is it your hill to begin with? asked Flynn. Because I was the first one to get stuck up there. It was called Gordon's Hill from that moment forward, and it's been that way ever since. Oh, so it's not an official name, quizzed Dennis. Which means it can be changed if circumstances arise. Gordon wished loudly and thundered away. The engines were only joking, but he was determined to settle this once and for all. I'll show them, I'll show them, he muttered. That afternoon, Sir Topham Hatt received word of a strange situation. Gordon has stopped in Henry's tunnel. What is going on? I'll see to this myself. When Sir Topham had arrived, he found Gordon sulking in the shadows. Gordon, would you mind explaining what this is all about? Why are you sitting in Henry's tunnel? Gordon smiled. Henry's tunnel? Henry's tunnel? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Last time I checked, this was Gordon's tunnel, since I am the most recent engine to stop inside. Sir Topham Hatt blinked. Gordon, get out. You are being ridiculous. No, sir. I am only being fair, considering the passengers have renamed my hill as Henry's Hill since Henry just got stuck on it. How long has he been doing this? About three hours, moaned Isabella. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. All right, Gordon, I see your point. We can rename this tunnel as Gordon's Tunnel, but trust me, it won't stick. Everyone will go back to calling it Henry's Tunnel, just like they'll be calling it Gordon's Hill in no time at all. Just then, Derek rolled in. Oh, hello everyone. What's going on here? Well, would you look at that, cried Isabella. Gordon's Tunnel has been renamed to Derek's Tunnel, since he is the most recent engine to stop inside. Sir Topham Hatt laughed and Gordon rolled his eyes. Fine, I see your point, sir. It's just, I haven't realized it until now, but that hill means so much to me. When everyone started calling it Henry's Hill, I didn't want it to be true, even if I do terribly despise that incline. Trust me, Gordon, it won't last. Give it some time and you'll see. And Sir Topham Hatt was right. The hype surrounding Henry's Hill quickly faded and a few days later everyone was back to calling it Gordon's Hill. It didn't mean much to the other engines, but secretly Gordon was very happy to have his hill back. Hey everybody, said Edward, I'm back from the works. Did you know that they're renaming Henry's Tunnel? I heard it from Victor. Everybody's talking about it. Apparently Derek got stuck in there the other day. Wait, they're renaming my tunnel? That's, that's my tunnel. It's not Derek's tunnel. It's Henry's tunnel. Sir Topham Hatt, Sir Topham Hatt, don't let them take my tunnel away. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 229, Marion Had a Little Lamb. The Sodor China Clay Works had been temporarily closed due to heavy rains and the engines that worked there were suddenly without a job. Oh, whatever will we do, cried Timothy. I've never worked anywhere outside of the clay pits before. Do you think Sir Topham Hatt will send me away? Nonsense, said Boko. There are plenty of jobs for you on this railway. I hear there's an opening at the chocolate factory, if anyone's interested. Timothy and Gator looked at each other and raced away. 
Bill and Ben, on the other hand, were in no such rush. Yay! No work for us! We'll get to play in the yard all day! Ooh, maybe we should go bug Edward at Wellsworth. Care to join us, Boko? It'll be just like old times. No thank you, he chuckled. Run along, you troublemakers. You're not my problem now. Marion, on the other hand, was rather distraught. Timothy's right. The Sodor China Clayworks is the only place I know of. It will be hard for me to fit in somewhere else since I'm such a specialized engine. Well, you could always go to the docks. It's a very busy place and they need all the help they can get. I suppose, she murmured. I guess I can't throw the cargo around like I do the rocks at my old job, right? No, please don't do that. Salty will never forget it. Just then, Harvey puffed up. I spent some time at the docks not too long ago, Marion. And while I wouldn't consider it to be my forever job, it was a nice change of pace to what I was used to. You should give it a shot. Marion smiled. All right, I'll do it. First thing tomorrow morning, I'll go down to the docks and see how I can help. True to her word, Marion arrived at the docks the next day. Boko wasn't kidding, she murmured. It's pure chaos here. We've got multiple ships coming in, grunted Cranky. Arthur, I need those trucks moved out of the way. Porter, clear the siding at once. And where are those delivery trucks? They should be here by now. We can't keep holding these packages until they decide to show up. You, down there, get Crosby on the telephone and tell them if they aren't here in 15 minutes, I'm throwing everything overboard. Oh, hello, Marion. Sorry I can't stay and chat, but it's a little crazy right now. We're missing valuable storage space since one of our piers got destroyed. Yes, I can see that. Is there anything I can do to help? Um, well, Farmer McColl has some new livestock that just came in. Would you be willing to take it to him on Thomas's branch line? Yes, of course. That sounds like a fun time. Great, it's that truck right over there. Good luck. Marion was excited. Oh boy, my first job outside of the quarry. Well, hello there, friend. Aren't you the cutest little lamb? You're so adorable. We are going to have so much fun together. Marion, shouted Salty, we need to use that track. Can you move the lamb and yourself, please? Oh, yes, sir, Salty, she spluttered. Oh, I've never pulled a train before. This is very weird. All right, we're off. See you, Cranky. Bye, Salty. And Marion puffed away with her delivery. She was very proud of her new job. Hello, Timothy. Greetings, Gator. Are you both enjoying your new life at Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory? Enjoying might be a bit of a stretch, said Gator. It's very different from the clay pits, that's for sure. Hey, watch it. You about hit me off the track. Oh, sorry, Gator. I'm not used to working in such a confined space. Well, you guys have fun. I'm taking this cute little lamb up to Farmer McColl's farm. Wow, that's so cool. Where is Farmer McColl's farm, anyway? Marion chuckled. It's on Thomas's branch line, didn't you know? Very interesting, added Timothy. How do you even get to Thomas's branch line? Oh, you know, you, uh, you go up the line and, and make a right, I, I think. And yeah, keep puffing until you see the farm, I'm guessing. Marion, are you sure you know where to go? Of course I do, Gator. I have everything under control. Speaking of which, your lamb has escaped, giggled Timothy. Marion gasped and looked around. The lamb had wandered onto a nearby runway. How did you get out of your truck, silly little lamb? You had me scared there for a second. Marion's driver ushered the lamb back into the car. Well, I must be going. Farmer McColl's farm is very, very far away. At least, I think it is. Anyway, see you guys around. And Marion was off. Unfortunately, she had never worked anywhere besides the China Clay Company, and Marion's unfamiliarity with Sodor started to show. 
Well, I thought I was headed in the right direction, but this looks like the steam works, and this is the cement works. Um, excuse me, Patrick. Is Farmer McColl's farm around here? Patrick laughed. Oh, no, Marion. That's on the other side of the island. Oh, bother. And here I thought I was making progress. Come along. Let's go. Hey, get back here. The cement works is no place to play around in. That's quite the curious little lamb, chuckled Patrick. Better keep an eye on her. Yes, indeed. If you keep this up, I'm not going to have anything to deliver to Farmer McColl, if I somehow make it there. But the trouble wouldn't stop. Marion tried her best, but she kept getting lost. Maybe I can see Farmer McColl's farm from way up here, she said. Okay, there's the cement works. I've already been there. There's the iron works. Ooh, looks hot. There's the lamb. The, the lamb? My lamb! How did you get down there? Come back! And Marion raced away. Fortunately, the Sodor Railway Repair came by and made sure the lamb didn't wander any further. An overturned boat is not a playground, she grumbled. Come along, we need to get you to your new home as soon as possible. But Marion still didn't have any luck. There's the airport again, and this must be the Blue Mountain Quarry. Oh, I am so lost, and with the sun beginning to set, there's no way I'm going to be able to find Farmer McColl's farm in the dark. Farmer McColl? asked Mighty. You're looking for his farm? Well, I've got some great news for you. Really? gasped Marion. Yes, you're not too far away, said Mac. Just follow this line through Knapford, and you'll get there really quick. Oh, thank you so much. Wow, the Blue Mountain Quarry is impressive. Those tall cliffs are... Oh my, that's my lamb. What is she doing up there? Get back down here. Don't be afraid, said Scarloe softly. Let's get you down on the ground where you belong. It took some gentle prodding, but eventually, Marion's lamb trotted down the incline and hopped back into the car. I can't thank you little engines enough, she said wearily. It's been a long day. And Marion puffed away. With sunlight rapidly fading, Marion followed Mighty Mac's directions, and at last, she finally arrived at Farmer McColl's farm. Hello, sir! We did it! Hooray! Wait, are you still back there? Oh, phew! It would have been just my luck if I'd arrived late and tired with no lamb in tow. Farmer McColl will not believe what I've been through today. Sir Topham Hatt laughed. Your story will have to wait another time, Marion. Farmer McColl was so worried about you and his lamb that he went to the docks to look for you both. I promised him I would stay here and keep watch in case you arrived. And, well, here you are. You're several hours late, of course, but you made it here in the end, and that's all that matters. Marion smiled. Thank you, sir. As much fun as today was, I can't wait to get back to the clay pits. I don't think animals are really my thing. They are too unpredictable, and they run away. Now rocks, rocks don't run away. They stay where you put them, and I like that. This lamb, on the other hand, Marion gasped. She had escaped again. Look over there, the lamb's just fine. Already taking a liking to Farmer McColl's farm, it appears. Just what we like to see. Marion breathed a sigh of relief. She was going to sleep very well tonight. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 230, Bye Bye Birdie. Thomas's branch line has a lot of friendly faces, one of them being Birdie the Bus. Usually, Birdie is on time and happy, but one day, things were a little different. Where's Birdie? murmured Thomas. He's running very late. Thomas's driver and the station master were worried. We can't have our existing passengers miss their connections at Natford. We have to leave right now if we're to stay on time. I understand. I'll have Bertie skip this station and head straight there when he arrives. Thomas was concerned. Bertie's never late, he said sadly. 
At Knapford, Thomas dropped his passengers off at the platform and shunted Annie and Clarabel into the yard. What's the matter, Thomas? You look glum. I am, Percy. Bertie wasn't at Ellsbridge Station earlier, and he still hasn't arrived here. I'm worried something's happened to him. He's definitely going to get a mouthful from Sir Topham Hatt for being so late. Just then, Bertie roared into the yard. No time to talk, Thomas. I'll explain later. You win today's race, but tomorrow, tomorrow's a different story. But Thomas didn't care about winning. Something is definitely up, he muttered. That's not like Bertie at all. The next day was just the same. Bertie was nowhere to be found at Ellsbridge. Thomas begrudgingly left the station so that he wouldn't be late. Two days in a row, murmured Sir Topham Hatt. This is highly unusual. Do you know of any road closures on your branch line? Any potholes, road construction? No, sir. Please give Bertie the opportunity to explain himself. I'm sure there's a good reason. Hmm, we'll see about that. Ah, right on time, if 15 minutes late was being on time. Care to explain, Bertie? I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk about it right now. Best I'm off to my next destination. Bertie, wait, cried Thomas. You must tell us what is going on. But Bertie had left. Sir Topham Hatt was very disappointed. I'll be waiting in my office if Bertie comes up with a good reason, he said quietly. Thomas felt hurt. Bertie never keeps secrets from me. I wish he would tell me what's going on. The next few days, Thomas gave his coaches to Percy. He was too frustrated with Bertie and didn't want to see him. Friends don't keep secrets from each other, he muttered. If I had something going on, I would definitely tell my friends, Bertie among them. He probably thinks that since he's won more races than me, he gets to keep things to himself. Well, I won't have it. Just then, the alarm sounded in the yard. Report of an automobile accident near Tory Wreck. One sedan and one bus involved. Search and rescue team have been notified, but they are busy with other calls. Tory Wreck, murmured Philip. That's your branch line, Thomas. You should go see what's wrong. Without hesitation, Thomas was coupled up to the breakdown train and set off. When he arrived on the scene, he found Bertie lying on his side with severe damage. Bertie, he gasped. What happened? Are you all right? What about the passengers? No passengers today, he murmured. They were tired of being late, so they took the train instead. And I don't blame them, honestly. Sir Topham Hatt soon arrived. Bertie, whatever is going on, it must stop. You have been late for a week straight and refuse to tell Thomas or myself what is going on. Bertie remained quiet. Thomas was becoming increasingly frustrated. We are your friends, Bertie, he said sadly. We want to know what's going on so that we can help you. Please tell us. Bertie took a deep breath and sighed. All right, I didn't want to say anything because, well, it's embarrassing. But there's been this car on the roads here. It keeps veering back and forth and taunting me, revving its engine, slowing me down. I don't even know his name, but he won't stop bugging me. I was hoping he'd go away, but every day it gets worse and worse. Today, I tried to outrun him, and, well, this is the result. Thomas gasped. The sedan, he whispered. The alarm said there was another car involved. I wonder where he went. I must go find him. Oh, you won't find him, Thomas. He's really fast. I mean, really fast. He'd beat both of us in a race and have time left over to beat us again and again. I've never seen anything like him before. This is very serious, Bertie, said Sir Topham Hatt. This car has been bullying you, and I will not tolerate such behavior. Once I find out who it is, I will put a stop to it. Butch arrived and towed Bertie away. He was going to be gone for repairs for quite a while. I guess I'll move Bulgy down from the Little Western to help out. Surely you two will get along, right? 
But Thomas wasn't so sure. Bulgy was the exact opposite of Bertie, in both looks and personality. Looks like your teeny weeny bus friend got himself into an accident, he chuckled. About time he was sent for an overhaul. Say bye-bye to Wimpy Birdie and hello to tough Bulgy here. Thomas didn't answer. He was still thinking about the mysterious car. If there was another vehicle with Bertie at the time of his crash, then he'll definitely need to be fixed too. I wonder if the bus yard can keep an eye out for anybody coming in for repairs. Ahem, I said, about time Bertie went for a... Oh, pipe down, Bulgy. Don't act like you're above everybody else. You've been left to rot in a field and under a bridge since I've known you. So if there's anybody that knows something about needing repairs, it's you. The engines at the platform laughed. Bulgy's mouth hung open. Well, I never, he stuttered. That afternoon, Thomas met up with Caroline. I need you to be on the lookout. Bertie was in an accident with another car, but we don't know who it is. Could you snoop around the bus yard near Natford and see if there's anyone there getting repaired? I'll do my best, she wheezed. My eyesight isn't that great nowadays, but I should be able to spot a dent when I see one. The next day, Caroline rolled into the yard to have a look around. Ah, welcome back, Caroline. It's always nice to see a repeat customer. What's failed since the last time you were in? Oh, be quiet. I'm not due for repairs. Yet. But keep a spot open just in case anything changes. Oh, look at this. You're quite the sporty machine. Do my eyes deceive me, or is that a cracked fender right there? Oh, right. Just a teeny one, that's all. It's a crazy story, actually. I was racing along like I usually do, and this ugly bus cut in front of me. He was blocking the way, so I gave him a slight tap, and he went by the wayside. Easy peasy. But this won't do for my next competition. Aerodynamics are so important. You want to hear about all my trophies, darling? It's Caroline, you mutt, and I've heard enough. Boys, don't let him leave. I think we found our culprit. When Sir Topham Hatt heard the news, he was very cross. He had the car towed to the yard where Thomas could take a look at him. Hmm, this could be who Bertie was talking about. He fits the description, but I'm not quite sure. Bertie, so that's the Slowpoke's name. I was wondering when we'd be introduced. Sir Topham Hatt looked at Thomas. I think that answers your question. Well, what do we call you? Ace is the name. I've been training for... Nope, that's enough. I don't want to hear it. By all accounts, you've been using the back roads on Thomas's branch line as your own little racetrack. And I won't have that on my railway. Consider yourself impounded, Ace. No more racing for you. Ace gasped. He struggled to find the words to say as Butch towed him away. Well, that solves one mystery, but I wonder why Bertie was so afraid to tell us what happened. Surely he knew I'd put a stop to it. I'm sure he did, sir, but I bet Bertie was hoping he would be strong enough to figure it out on his own. He didn't want to ask for help because it would make him look weak. Yes, I can see that, but please remember, Thomas, I'm always here to help you and your friends. It's never a bother to listen to your stories or suggestions. Well, I best be attending to other issues on the railway. Bulgy will continue to help on your line until Bertie returns. Will that be a problem? Thomas smiled. I don't think so, sir. Bulgy and I have had an understanding of sorts. Good. And also, no more racing between you and Bertie. If this ace fellow can't do it, then neither can you two. I want everyone on my railway to stay safe, engines and road vehicles alike. Thomas wholeheartedly agreed. It was a small price to pay to have his friend Bertie feeling more comfortable on the back roads of Sodor. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 231, Luke Dukes It Out. One day at the Blue Mountain Quarry, the workmen were digging away when suddenly... 
Well, I'll be. There's an engine in this cave, they shouted. Notify Mr. Percival and Sir Topham Hatt. They'll both want to see this. The narrow gauge engines looked on with wonder as Butch pulled the new discovery into the sunlight. Ah, shrieked Duncan. What's wrong with his face? Don't be rude, said Scarloe. I bet he hasn't seen the sunlight in a very long time. Ooh, be gentle. That's bright, said the engine. Wow, what are all of you doing here? We could ask you the same thing, said Mr. Percival. Luke, I see. That's interesting. I don't ever remember having a Luke on this railway. I'm a new engine. Well, I was a new engine, way back when. I arrived on a boat, and on my first day here, I was caught in a rock slide and buried. I don't know how long ago that was. Time has a funny way of messing with you when there's no light. Hmm, that does make sense. If this engine never ran into anyone before he got stuck here, it would be like he never existed. I bet our shipping records indicate an engine matching Luke's basis was dropped off some time ago, but if he never checked in with anyone, I probably assumed he was returned to his original railway. This is a very unusual situation, agreed Mr. Percival. The Blue Mountain Quarry has been dormant for quite some time, and we've only recently returned to the area. No wonder nobody found you until today. Remarkably, Luke was in very good condition when he was put back onto the track. I'll schedule a date for you to see Victor at the steamworks, said Sir Topham Hatt. In the meantime, I think I will have you... Just then, a siren blared through the valley. What? What's that sound? gasped Luke. It means that the miners are preparing to blast, said Reneus. It's a warning for us to seek shelter. Come on in, you'll be safe inside the shed here. But Luke was scared. I don't like that sound, he murmured. I have to get out of here. And Luke rushed away. He didn't stop until he reached the station and the noise was long gone. Well, aren't you a cute little thing, chuckled Caitlin. You seem scared. Is everything okay? Yes, I think so. Well, no. Actually, I'm not sure. Duke sensed something was wrong. Come on, he said. Let's go on a little trip. And the two engines puffed along the line. Luke was happy to get away from the rock and rubble. It had been a long time since he had seen the ocean and smelled the salt water. This is our wharf, said Duke. It's quiet and calm here. Now let's sit and talk. Sir Topham Hatt told me you ran away from the quarry after hearing the blasting siren. Yes, said Luke shyly. It, it startled me, that's all. I can see there's something going on with you. Believe it or not, we aren't that different. A long time ago, I was put into a shed and abandoned. I didn't see the sun for years. I took a lot of naps, mind you, but it was a very difficult time. I didn't know if I was ever going to be found. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Luke agreed. On the day I got lost, right before the rock slide hit, I heard a loud siren. I didn't know what to do, so I froze. I guess I was in the blast zone, and that's why I got buried. I heard that siren loud and clear today for the first time in forever, and it brought back some awful memories. I panicked and ran away so that I wouldn't be buried again. Duke sighed. We've both been through traumatic experiences, he said quietly. Every time I back into a shed, I picture the door closing on me and being stuck inside, alone, forever. Isn't that silly? A shed is supposed to be a safe place to rest. And here I was, scared to go to sleep at night. You? Scared to go to sleep? But you seem like such a brave engine. I'm only brave because of what I've seen and experienced. I can help you with your fear of the quarry if you want. It won't be easy, but you'll have me by your side. I like the sound of that, said Luke. He was still very on edge, but was feeling a little bit better. 
Later that day, the two engines returned to the quarry. I think it's important that you become acclimated to the sights and sounds of the Blue Mountain Quarry. Why don't you explore at your own pace? I'll catch up with you after I get a drink of water. Luke was very determined. Sounds easy enough. Guess there's no better place to start than at the top of the incline. And he puffed up the hill. Well, nice to finally meet you, Luke, chuckled Merrick. Isn't the view incredible up here? Luke barely had his eyes open, but he managed to glance around. Yes, it's, it's quite blue, I'm guessing. All right, I think that's enough for one day. I'm going to head down before... Just then, a piercing noise echoed through the canyon. It's another siren, gasped Luke. They're blasting. I have to get away from here. I don't want to be buried again. Relax. It's okay, Luke. We clear this top line just in case a few rocks decide to come down onto the track, but you'll be fine. I would be more concerned if you were like Peter Sam over there, sitting and doing nothing. He's the one who needs to get a move on. Luke glanced over. Peter Sam wasn't moving. Any day now, murmured Merrick. Does he not hear the siren? Just then, Luke looked a little closer. He could see Peter Sam straining to pull his trucks away. Something's not right. I need to go help him. Wait, Luke, stop! You need to clear the line! What's the matter, Peter Sam? The trucks have put their brakes on, he gasped. I can't move! Give me a shove, please! With the siren still blaring, Luke banged the trucks as hard as he could. Peter Sam inched towards the top of the hill. Luke pushed with all of his might, and at last, the two engines were moving. Hooray! shouted Merrick. Wait! Stop! Look out below! But it was too late. The heavy train thundered down the hill and crashed into Sir Handel at the bottom. Oh no! cried Luke. I'm sorry, everyone. This is all my fault. Later that day, Mr. Percival arrived. Oh no! I'm in so much trouble. He's going to send me away for sure. But Mr. Percival was smiling. Luke, I want to commend you for your bravery and quick thinking. What? what you're, you're thanking me? Well, who else would we thank? laughed Sir Handel. Is there another engine that saved Peter Sam instead of you? No, I mean, I pushed Peter Sam down the hill and caused this giant crash. You both will have to go get repaired. I've caused a lot of problems here. I should not be getting thanked. Oh, be quiet and listen. I was stuck up on the cliff and would have made it clear of the blast zone had you not come to my aid. Sure, crashing at the bottom of the hill wasn't ideal, but I'll take a few repairs over being buried by rubble. Wouldn't you agree? Luke smiled. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. Maybe I did mess up as badly as I thought. Mr. Percival looked around. Sir Handel and Peter Sam will need repairs right away. Once they're back, I'll be sending you to the works as well, Luke. Your entire front will need to be replaced, but when it's all said and done, you'll look like a really useful engine. Well done, my boy, said Duke. You face your fears and save the day. That's exactly what a brave engine does. I have no doubt in my mind that you'll make a fine addition to this railway. And when Luke returned from the works a few weeks later, the engines gave three cheers to their newest friend. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 232, Painting the Rosie's Red. Rosie had been feeling down lately. Every day it's the same old thing, she grumbled. I wake up, I go to the yard, I shunt some trucks, I might pull a coach or two, I'll definitely pull a freight train or two, and then it's off to bed. Next day, same thing. Next week, same thing. Next year, oh, do be quiet, grumbled Gordon. You're not the only one who has to do the same jobs over and over again. Stop complaining. That's the thing, though. You get to pull the express. Thomas and Edward have their own branch lines. Duck and Oliver get the Little Western. 
What do I get? A shed door shut in your face if you keep at it, murmured James. No, no, Rosie's got a point. It can be very tedious to do the same thing over and over again. And that's why you have to enjoy the little things, proclaimed Henry. Every day after I get done pulling my trains, I take a nice slow puff through my forest and look at all the different trees. It really puts things into perspective. But Rosie was still unhappy. What I need is a radical change. It's time to spice things up and leave the old Rosie behind. And what better way to do that than with a new coat of paint? That sounds like a good idea, came a voice. Rosie looked over. It was old Slowcoach. Oh, hi there. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. Things have been rather stale lately, and I feel like a big transformation is due. What do you think? A new coat of paint can go a long ways, she replied. When I was saved from scrap and got repainted, it completely changed everything about me. I went from a load of rubbish to a workman's house and then some. To this day, it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Rosie smiled. Then that settles it. I am going to get a new coat of paint. But the other engines in the yard weren't so convinced. Ooh, watch out, chuckled Stafford. Rosie's going to march into the steamworks and ask Victor for a can of lilac paint instead of lavender. Big difference, you know. Philip chuckled. Thanks for the heads up, Rosie. We wouldn't want to mistake you for all of the other pink engines on the railway. Rosie rolled her eyes. Just you wait and see, she said. This change will be a big one. Trust me. Later that day, Rosie arrived at the steamworks. Hello, Victor. I was wondering, whoa, it's quite the madhouse in here. Um, yes. Sorry for the confusion. We are quite busy at the moment. What can I help you with? Yes, well, I think, no, I know that I would like a new coat of paint. Victor looked around. That's, that's it? You just want to repaint? Yes, simple enough, right? Maybe throw in a few minor changes here and there to appease Stafford and Philip. Yes, right. I suppose I could spare a workman or two to repaint you. We'll touch up your lining, polish your whistle, all of the usual things. Hey, shouted Vinny, this better not be taken away from my repairs. No, of course not, Vinny. We are working with the utmost haste to get you out of here. Trust me, we don't want to keep you around longer than we have to. Rosie was excited. Yes, perfect. This sounds amazing. When I puff out of here in a few hours, I am going to feel like a completely new engine. But when Rosie returned to the yard, the reception was not what she was expecting. So, what do you think? Pretty radical, right? The engines looked at one another. Did, did you already go to the steamworks? Yes, can't you see a difference? No, not really. You look just the same as before. Although there is something a little bit different about you. Yeah, but I can't quite pinpoint what it is. Still, you look like the same old Rosie to me. Rosie sighed. Old slow coach, what do you think? It's a start, dear, but I think you need to go bigger and bolder. You don't feel any different, do you? Not really, she admitted. Well, that was a bust. I guess I better get back to work. Nonsense, said Philip. We'll cover the trains while you go back and try something different. Really? Aw, that's so nice of you guys. We can see that this means a lot to you, said Stanley. Keep at it until you're happy with the end result. Rosie smiled and puffed back to the steamworks. Victor was quite surprised to see her again. Ah, back so soon? Is something wrong? No, not really. It's just, I think I want to try something a little bit different, Victor. Say no more. I have the perfect idea in mind. Boys, let's begin again. And Victor's crew went right to work. How about this, everybody? 
It probably doesn't seem like a lot, but I think we're making great progress. The engines were still skeptical. Again, it doesn't seem like you've changed a whole lot. What about the bigger and bolder elements Old Slow Coach was talking about? Yes, I suppose the next step would be something bold. Do you think it's time for me to change my paint color? Maybe that's what's holding me back. I think that's a wonderful idea, cried Philip. Pink is great and all, but let's see something really crazy. Rosie explained the situation to Victor. Really crazy, huh? Well, I do have something crazy in mind. It's a bit of a different take on what engines should look like, but trust me, it's what everybody wants to see. And I am partial to the paint color, what little of it there is. Rosie smiled. Let's give it a shot then. Upon her return to the yard, however... Oh no, cried Stafford. Victor's gone mad this time. Where's the rest of your paint? Why didn't they finish the job? It, it is finished. I know it's a little different, but you have to admit that there is a certain warmth to this design. It's unfinished is what it is, said Old Slow Coach. Fill in the details and we might have a contender. Rosie ran back to the steamworks and returned a short while later. Better, murmured the engines, but there are still a few things missing. The color is right, but I feel like the overall design could be improved. Rosie was growing weary. I don't know if I can take another redesign, and my wheels hurt from running back and forth all day. Victor was also very tired. Back again? This is the fourth or fifth time you've been here today. I've never devoted as much time or workmen to a project as I have on you. I don't know what else I can improve upon. Give me everything you got, Victor. We're so close. Just a little bit more to put it over the edge. Okay, but this is it. It's about closing time, and tomorrow we must turn our attention back to other projects, such as Vinny here. I can't believe you schmucks have left me sitting here while this redhead gets all the attention. Rosie was nervous. One last chance to get it right, she whispered. Back at the yard, it was nearly dark, but the anticipation was building. Word had spread about Rosie's transformations throughout the day, and the engines were excited. I see some smoke, gasped Billy. Here she comes. Rosie puffed in and came to a stop. So, she asked, what do you think? At first, nobody said anything. Then, it's incredible. You look amazing. That's it. That's the winner right there. Well done, Rosie. You're fabulous. Rosie blushed as the engines continued to rave. Even Gordon was impressed. Well, maybe it's time I got a new coat of paint. You know, when I was young and green... Sorry, green is taken, chuckled Henry. You were blue once, remember that. I'm pretty sure we were all blue at one point. Not me. I would never give up my red paint. Oh, James, this isn't about you. And the engines went on and on. Rosie looked around and smiled. It had taken all day and several attempts, but thanks to the support of her friends, she was finally looking the way she wanted to. Who knew a little paint could do so much, she giggled quietly. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 233, Bad News Bear. One day at Knapford Station, the Flying Scotsman was preparing to pull a special train. There are some important mainland officials waiting at Vickerstown, said Sir Topham Hatt. I can think of no better engine to carry them around Sodor than this magnificent locomotive right here. And, since you weren't able to pull the train last time, this will serve as your redemption. That's very kind of you, sir. It's always a pleasure to serve on your railway. Philip, 
Please bring the Green Express coaches to the platform. The Flying Scotsman must not be late. Gordon was impressed. I normally don't like being upstaged, but this, <laughs> this is an exception. I only wish I was as lucky as you, Gordon. You get to pull the Express almost every day. That's something we mainland engines dream of. Sir Topham Hatt was anxious. The great railway show officials are scouting for some new competition areas. They are thinking that since most of the engines stayed here during the previous show, why not move the entire event to Sodor as well? Oh, that is exciting, said Duck. It would be a very big deal for Sodor to host the great railway show. Yes, and therefore, today must go perfect. We must display Sodor in its best light to convince the officials that this railway will be a great place to hold the competition. My word, where is Philip? Where has he gone off to? The engines waited at the platform. Philip was nowhere to be found. He'll be along in just a minute, said Gordon. He's still new and inexperienced, I think. Just then, Philip puffed in. He was out of breath. Sir, I, I've looked everywhere, but, but those coaches you wanted are nowhere in the yard. Sir Topham Hatt laughed. No, that is impossible. We have three Green Express coaches that are held in reserve for our very special trains. Now run along and try again. I checked too, sir, said Stanley, in every single sighting, and I'm afraid there are no Green Express coaches here. Sir Topham Hatt didn't know what to say. Well, I, I mean, try looking, um, what? I'm sorry, sir, those coaches are not here. Oh, bother, moaned Duck. There must be a reasonable explanation to all of this, said the Flying Scotsman. They couldn't have simply disappeared. When was the last time they were used? Well, it would have been when you were supposed to take the officials from Natford to Vickerstown, and you couldn't get started, remember? So I had Bear... Sir Topham Hatt stopped. Bear, mumbled Gordon. He pulled those coaches, right? I... I believe so. I wasn't there at Vickerstown when he arrived, but by all accounts, he was the last engine to use them. Duck wasn't convinced. You don't really think that Bear stole those coaches. He's one of the nicest engines out there. He's from the mainland, grunted Gordon. That's all you need to know. As am I, Gordon. I bet there's a simple reason why we can't find the coaches, and Bear would be a good place to start. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Looks like I will go search for Bear and see where he has placed those coaches. You stay here, Flying Scotsman. This shouldn't take too long. And Sir Topham Hatt hopped in Winston and drove to the diesel works. Fortunately, Bear was there, and he was being looked at by Den and Dart. Well, hello, sir. I didn't expect to see you here today. Neither did I. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Please listen. We have a very important train due out, and I need your full cooperation. On the day that you pulled the special train from Natford to Vickerstown in place of the Flying Scotsman, where did you put the coaches when you were done? Bear thought hard. I believe... I believe an engine took them away from me, sir. No, that's not possible. Every engine shunts their own coaches at Vickerstown because there's no yard nearby. You must have left them at the platform, perhaps. No, I distinctly remember an engine came up and took the coaches away. I coasted into the station on fumes and I couldn't have shunted them anywhere since I was out of fuel. Then Edward arrived and he pushed me back to Natford. Is something wrong, sir? Sir Topham Hatt was at a loss. I don't know, honestly. But those coaches are nowhere to be found and you were the last engine to pull them. Bear gasped. Sir, I, I wouldn't. Please don't think I stole them. I'll do everything I can to assist you. Um, you're not going anywhere today. 
blown fuse, it looks like. Have a seat next to Derek and we'll get working on your teething troubles. Sir Topham Hat sighed. I believe you, Bear, but I must have those coaches back as soon as possible. If we cannot find them, well... Sir Topham Hat climbed back into Winston and sped away. Bear was feeling very upset. Back at Natford Station, it was nearly time for the Flying Scotsman to depart. Sir Topham Hat raced in and climbed out. Any luck, sir? asked Duck. I'm afraid not, and we have no more time to lose. Gordon, please hand your express coaches over to the Flying Scotsman. These will do the job, but they will not make quite the impression I was hoping. Normally, Gordon would have fussed at any last-minute change, but he understood the circumstances and quickly obeyed. Try and put this distraction behind you, Flying Scotsman. Pick up those officials from Vickerstown and give them the grandest tour of Sodor. Go slow where needed, stop where they want to stop, answer any questions they have. In the meantime, I will continue to look for more clues in the case of the missing coaches. The Flying Scotsman whistled and puffed out of the station. Cheer up, sir, said Winston. It could be worse. I know this isn't exactly what you had planned. Yes, I know, but the disappearance of those coaches points to a much bigger problem on this railway. Theft. Where have those green express coaches gone? Who has taken them? What if all of the express coaches vanished one day? What would we do with our passengers? Back at the diesel works, Bear was feeling anxious. Is there any way we can speed this up? I feel obligated to help Sir Topham Hat look for the coaches. Can't rush perfection, said Den. You go out there with a half-finished fuse box, and you'll stop dead on the tracks. But the uncertainty was wearing away at Bear. Oh, I can't take it any longer. I'll be back, Dart and Den. I must help out while I can. Stop, they shouted. You aren't fixed yet. But Bear didn't care. I must clear my name. Sir Topham Hat can't think I stole his coaches. Now where would they be? I should probably start looking at Vickerstown Station since that's the last place I saw them. But Bear didn't get very far. His engine began to sputter and he slowed to a stop on the main line. Then he heard a whistle. Oh no! Stop! Please stop! I'm in the way! Don't run me over! But it was too late. The Flying Scotsman rushed in with the coaches and slammed into the stationary bear, throwing them both off the rails. The damage was catastrophic. Meanwhile, Sir Topham Hat was at Vickerstown Station. The great railway show officials were there as well. It's nearly time, sir, said Winston. The Flying Scotsman's going to be late. What will they think of our railway if their tour is delayed? Just then, Bell and Flynn raced by with their lights blaring. What's going on? asked Flora. There must have been an accident or something. Sir Topham Hat was very nervous. He could see the officials were becoming anxious. Good news, sir, said the station master. Your coaches have been spotted coming over the Vickerstown Bridge. They are being pulled by a green diesel. Oh, phew, what a relief. It looks like Bear was able to produce them after all. That's not all, sir. Reports say that the Flying Scotsman has derailed on top of Henry's Tunnel, and he's not the only engine involved. The other one, a D3 diesel. Why, that's Bear, gasped Winston. But who's pulling the coaches then, asked Flora. Sir Topham Hat in the engine soon found out. <laughs> Missed me, have you, fat man? Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 234, Bowler Strikes Again. Sir Topham Hatt stood stunned on the platform of Vickerstown Station. There, pulling his three luxurious Green Express coaches, was Diesel 261, otherwise known as Bowler. You, you were the one who stole the coaches. 
What is this all about? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, manners, please. Hello, gentlemen. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. I will be taking you around the island of Sodor today. I understand we are searching for new locations for the Great Railway Show. Uh, precisely. But I do have a question. I thought we were going to be pulled by the Flying Scotsman. Oh, yes. Last I saw, he's back there on his side in a pile of debris. Steam engines, am I right? If we have time, we can stop by the crash site and gawk at the glory. The engines gasped. Um, excuse me, gentlemen. There's been a mistake. This engine here is not... Sir Topham Hatt, I must remind you that you are not to interfere with our tour today. As officials of the Great Railway Show, we must see the island of Sodor through an objective perspective to truly appreciate and ponder its possibilities. It would be rather unfair for you to try and change or obstruct what Sodor has to offer. We shall begin our tour immediately. And the officials climbed aboard. Bowler grinned devilishly. This is it, Topham. All those years you made me suffer the humiliation and disgrace on this railway. Now I get to pay it back. These officials will get to see Sodor, all right. The side of Sodor that I choose. Hopefully they have an appreciation for scrapyards and factories, because that's what I'll be showing them today. And if you make one move to try and change my agenda, I will ruin your coaches and your railway so that Sodor never gets a chance to host the Great Railway Show. Do we have an understanding? You are revolting. And to think, I was almost convinced that Bear had stolen the coaches away. Bear? Is that what the traitor calls himself now? I knew he was a soft one, but not that soft. Better go scrape the remains of him and Scotsman off the rails before I pass by. Now that would be an ugly sight for the officials to see. And Bowler rolled out of the station. Who is that engine? asked Winston. And why is he going to sabotage our chance to host the Great Railway Show? Sir Topham Hatt sighed. It's a long story, but many years ago, I sent Bowler and his friend away for causing trouble on my railway. Ever since then, they have done their best to inflict as much confusion and delay when they can. I haven't heard from them in quite a while, but it appears they were scheming up this plan in the meantime. What about the train? asked Flora. What can we do to stop him from ruining the tour? I'm afraid there isn't much we have control over. And honestly, I'm more concerned about Bear and the Flying Scotsman right now. We must attend to them immediately. Sir Topham Hatt climbed into Winston and drove away. With the main line completely blocked, Sir Topham Hatt was forced to park below and climb up to get anywhere near the crash. My word, this is horrible, he gasped. It's bad, sir, said Flynn. The coaches are mostly unharmed, but the engines, well... The flying Scotsman was about to be towed away. Easy there, easy, he whispered. Can you tell me what happened? Do you remember what you saw? Bear was stopped on the line here. I smelled the smoke coming from his engine before I even saw him. I tried to slow down, but... Yes, you were in a hurry to get to the station. Well, I'll let Victor know you're on the way, and maybe he can make some room. You need to get that eye looked at. It's already swelling. I don't think I'm headed to the steamworks, sir. An old engine like me? The people on the mainland will have their say as to where I end up. Tell Gordon I'm very proud of him. And the flying Scotsman was pulled away. Sir Topham Hatt sighed and walked over to Bear. I am very sorry I didn't believe you. It was wrong of me, and I only wish... It's all right, sir. You were correct. I was the last engine to pull those coaches. I should have paid more attention to where they ended up. Do... do you think Den and Dart will be able to fix me? They'll give it their best shot, I know that. They're the best in the business. Bear smiled. I shall like to see them try, he said softly. 
Sir Topham Hatt walked grimly away. Back at Natford Station, the rest of the engines were starting to hear the news. The Flying Scotsman and Bear crashed together? How could this have happened? Apparently, Bear was sitting on the main line, said Thomas. What an awful place to stop, added Ryan. What a convenient place, if you ask me. I bet he was trying to make the Flying Scotsman crash so that he could pull the special train. Now that's ridiculous, said Terence. Why would he crash himself on purpose? Settle down, everyone, said Edward. This is not the time to argue. The railway has been through a terrible shock today, but we must... Move out of the way, you load of scrap. Express coming through. <laughs> what in the world? gasped Thomas. It's, it's Bowler. What's he doing here? He's got the green express coaches. We must notify Sir Topham Hatt. Already on it, everyone. Edward, I think it's best if you move out of the way and let this diesel do as he pleases. Yeah, listen to the fat man. I'm in control now. The great railway show officials are on board, and if you try and stop me, this train will be coming off the track. How did this happen, sir? Bowler here stole the coaches from Bear many months ago, and has been parading them around on the mainland, waiting for his opportunity to strike. He's chosen a brilliant moment, I must admit. Tell me, what have you shown the officials so far? Well, we went straight to the ironworks and looked at molten lava for a little bit. They complained about the heat, so I almost threw them off the viaduct, but didn't. Then we went to the docks and smelled the fish, and they complained about that. Then we went to the waste dump. Those are all terrible places to visit, said Gordon. They won't be impressed with any of that. Precisely. Wow, you're a sharp one. Too bad I can't say the same about your brother. Gordon wheeshed loudly. By the end of the day, the officials will be exposed to the truth and realize what an awful place Sodor is. And the Great Railway Show will return to the mainland where it belongs. Oh, looks like it's time to go. Catch me if you can. <laughs> We must stop him, sir. We can't let Bowler do any more damage than he's already done. If only we could replace him at the front of the train. Then one of us could give the officials the tour of Sodor they really deserve. But Sir Topham Hatch shook his head. It's no use. They know a dark green diesel is pulling them. Even if we somehow get control of the train and swap engines, they'll know we have interfered in their tour, and we can't do that. Wait, said Ryan. A dark green diesel? That sounds like the perfect job for... The engine stared blankly. You don't know who I'm talking about, do you? Oh, get on with it, grumbled Gordon. Okay, hear me out. And Ryan explained his plan. Not a bad idea, said James. So that's how we complete the tour if we get control of the train. But how are we going to swap engines without the officials noticing? The engines thought for a moment. You'll need to get Bowler to stop, murmured Terence. And you'll have to have some points or a siding nearby where another engine can roll up, added Gordon. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. I know just the place, he said. What is it? gasped the engines. Please tell us, sir. No, not right now. I need you all to focus on your jobs for the rest of the day. I can't have one half of my island fall apart while I try to fix the other. If all goes well, I will have a magnificent story to tell you all tonight. And if not, who knows what will become of Sodor and the Great Railway Show. Now get back to work, please. And Sir Topham Hatt rushed away. It was time for him to save the railway. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 235, Paxman Pulls Through. Sir Topham Hatt rushed into the diesel works where Den and Dart were working. He had a very short amount of time to stop Bowler from ruining the remainder of the tour. Hello, sir, they said. 
Two visits in one day? Yes, we have a situation going on, and I must stop it before it gets any worse. Where is Derek? He's sleeping over there, sir. We're still working on his teething troubles. Sir Topham Hatt walked over. Derek, I need you to wake up. I have an important task for you. Derek yawned. Sounds promising, sir, but I don't think I'm right for the job. You see, my engine's been acting up. Yes, I know, but we have no time to lose. A diesel from the mainland has hijacked some coaches carrying the great railway show officials. He's determined to show them the worst of Sodor, and we must get the train back before too much damage is done. Interesting. Could this possibly be related to the crash up on Henry's tunnel over there? Yes, precisely. How would you like to be a hero and save the day? Derek was surprised. Sounds wonderful, sir. But my teething troubles. I can't move very fast, and I wouldn't dare pull a large train. Then we'll be putting Den and Dart's work to the test. We need to get rolling right away. Did you hear, sir? gasped Dart. We just got word that Bear was involved in the crash up there. Yes, and he wants you and Den to repair him. Think you're up for the challenge? The two engines looked at each other. The damage sounds severe, but we've never shied away from a challenge. We'll do everything we can to make him better again. That's what I like to hear. Now come on, Derek. You're needed at once. Sir Topham Hatt drove away and Derek followed him. They made their way up to the crash site where the cleanup was still underway. Almost done, sir, said Harvey. Flynn just took Bear away, so we should get these lines open in just a few minutes. Wonderful, said Sir Topham Hatt. Now, I want all of you to stop working at once. The engines were confused. Stop working? asked Bell. But, sir, I thought you would want the track clear as soon as possible. Ordinarily, yes. But I need a train to stop here so that we can fix something that's gone terribly wrong. You heard the controller, said Rocky. Cranes down, everyone. Meanwhile, Bowler was showing the great railway show officials the scrapyard for the third time in a row. This is nice and all, but we've been going around in a loop for who knows how long. Is this really all that Sodor has to offer? Yes, you've seen the best, but perhaps it is time to move on. Can I interest you in some viaducts and tunnels? Um, not really. We'd like to see some shunting areas, if possible. Right then, to Henry's Tunnel we go. Then it's off to the mainland with my precious coaches. Sir Topham Hatt knew Bowler would soon be along. We have one shot to get this right, he told Derek. The diesel will have to stop here because the track is blocked. We'll switch the points and you'll back up to the coaches and take them to Vickerstown Station. I'll do my best, said Derek nervously, but I still don't know if I'll be able to make it that far. Just then, Bowler rolled in and came to a stop. Well, I am impressed. Looks like you managed to pry Scotsman and Bear off the rails before we came by. It is important to show a good image when you have visitors on your railway. Now, cried Sir Topham Hatt, and the points underneath Bowler were switched. If you move, you'll go one way and the coaches will go another. You won't look very cool and sophisticated if you derail with the officials aboard, will you? Bowler growled. I told you not to interfere with my train. He tried to pull away, but the coaches were destined to jump the track. Eventually, Bowler's coupling snapped due to the strain. Now's your chance, Derek. Keep going, keep going, perfect. You've only got to head down the track and pull into the station for the tour to be over. Do you think you can make it there? I'll do my best, sir, he said and he pulled slowly away. His engine was making all sorts of weird noises, 
but Derek was not going to be stopped. That's my train, Grrr! and you're going to replace me with that Paxman creature? The officials will know you've switched engines and tampered with their tour. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled. You'd be surprised how similar all you diesels look. Well, now that the track is clear, I will be off. Mark my words, fat man. I will return and get those coaches. Maybe I can't keep Sodor from hosting the next great railway show, but I will do everything I can to make it a terrible experience for everyone involved. And Bowler reversed down the line and he was gone. Should we try and follow him, sir? asked Bell. No, it's not worth it. After everything that's happened today, I'm just glad he no longer has control of the official's train. But I do hope Derek made it to the station all right. It was indeed a struggle, and Derek was wheezing and chortling badly. But somehow, he managed to pull into Vickerstown Station. Well done, Derek, said Gordon. That was a tremendous effort. The great railway show officials were quite annoyed. After all that ruckus and steelwork sightseeing and scrapyard hoopla, you decide to break down on us, huh? What a terrible tour. Hey, are you sure you're the same diesel we had earlier? You're the same color and all, but I sense there's something different about you. What's your name? Quick, whispered Stepney. Try and act like Bowler to throw them off. Oh, yes. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm Paxman. Sodor is bad. Diesel's good. The mainland is, is awesome. Ha 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 ha. The officials looked at each other. Still as poorly spoken as at the beginning of the tour, they grumbled. Now we know never to ride in one of Paxman's trains. Well, we were expecting Sir Topham Hatt to meet us here, but that does not appear to be the case. Tell your controller that we will be reviewing everything we saw today, and will make our decision at a later date. And the two gentlemen walked away. The engines breathed a huge sigh of relief. That night at the shed, Sir Topham Hatt stopped by. Today was a very challenging day. However, I am extremely proud of how everyone adapted to the difficult situation. I say this a lot, but tonight I really mean it. You are all really useful engines. What about Derek, sir? asked James. I heard he was smoking badly when he pulled into Vickerstown. Derek did a magnificent job finishing the tour. But yes, he blew every single working part in his system, and then some. Den and Dart have assured me he'll be fine, and so will Bear. Both will need significant repairs, but they will return to pulling trains in the future. And the Flying Scotsman, asked Gordon, what about him? The Flying Scotsman elected to be taken to the mainland for repairs. Unfortunately, I don't have an update on his condition right now. You know how the mainland fluctuates on their preservation of steam engines. We can only hope that an engine of his stature and importance will receive the best of care there is. And a job well done to you, sir, added Thomas. You were all over the railway today. It's not as easy as it looks, is it? Sir Topham Hatt laughed. You can thank Winston for that. Well, get a good night's rest, everyone. Tomorrow's a new day, and who knows what will await us. And the engines went to sleep as Sir Topham Hatt drove quietly away. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 236, Victor and Victoria. One day, an engine from the mainland brought a blue and white coach to the island of Sodor. Hey, where is your scrapyard again? Uh, it's down the main line next to Wellsworth, said Murdoch. You picking something up? No, I'm making a delivery. Our scrapyard is filled to the brim and is about to start overflowing. 
Hey, don't bring your rubbish over here, said Molly. We work hard to keep our railway clean and tidy. No, no, it's fine, interrupted Whiff. We'll make a one-time exception, but don't let this become a habit. The engines were surprised. Why did you tell that engine to go dump his trash in your scrapyard? Didn't you see the coach he was pulling? If we didn't take her, he was going to find some place else to shrug her off, presumably somewhere less dignified than Sodor. Don't worry, I'll save her before anything bad happens. By the time Whiff had arrived at the scrapyard, Edward was already making his acquaintance with the new coach. You're from the Furnace Railway? Unbelievable! So am I! Oh, there you are, Whiff. You're not going to believe what a mainland engine dropped off here. Whiff smiled. As soon as I saw those classic Furnace Railway colors, I knew she had to be saved. The coach was very grateful. Thank you both so much. My name is Victoria, and I know I'm not a lot to look at right now, but if I could get some repairs, I would be a great service on your railway. Say no more, said Edward. It would be an honor to restore a beautiful coach like you. Let's get you to the steamworks right away. When Sir Topham Hatt heard the news, he was very impressed. A great save by both of you, he told the engines. This coach has a lot of potential, and I'm sure Victor will do his best to restore her to her former glory. But the steamworks was still very busy, and Victor had a lot of projects going on. You should take the day off, said the workman. We'll handle things while you get some much-needed rest. No can do. There are too many engines who need my attention. Combine that with the fact that Kevin didn't show up to work today. But the workmen were firm. Take a run and stretch your wheels. In the meantime, we'll get cracking on some of these projects, including this new coach that just arrived. Victor reluctantly agreed. However, there was soon trouble. Looks like we don't have the right parts for Victoria here. They'll arrive tomorrow, but in the meantime, she's taking up valuable space in the workshop. Say no more. I will take her on a trip so that she's out of the way. The workman chuckled. Oh, yeah? And how is she going to fit on your narrow gauge rails? Victor smiled. He had a clever idea. In no time at all, the workman had fitted Victoria with a narrow gauge chassis so that she could ride on the rails of the Scarloe Railway. Well, I'll be. I guess I'm a narrow gauge coach for the day. Precisely. Now we'll let the workmen do their thing. And if anything goes wrong, uh, you get to be in charge, Vinny. I swear, if I don't get out of here in the next few days... But Victor was gone. He was secretly very excited about his time away from the steamworks. Let me show you around, he said proudly. You've seen part of the standard gauge line before, but not from this angle. This viaduct is beautiful. I can't wait to see what else Sodor has to offer. Victor enjoyed showing Victoria around. Everywhere he went, the narrow gauge engines were welcoming and friendly. And this is the Blue Mountain Quarry, I guess. I don't get out a lot, but I think this is what it looks like. Whoa, what's going on? asked Luke. We never see you here, Victor. Did the steamworks burn down? No, I'm just taking a short holiday, that's all. That's a nice coach you got there, added Sir Handel. Oh, yes, where are my manners? Friends, this is Victoria. She's normally a standard gauge coach, but thanks to a few modifications, she's spending the day as one of us. Victoria couldn't believe what she was seeing. I've spent so many years in disrepair that the only thing I've known is scrapyards and trash heaps. I forgot there was another part of the world out there that I still need to see. The engine smiled. You're a good engine, Victor, they said. The rest of the day was full of adventure. Victor showed Victoria around Olfstead Castle, 
and even managed to puff all the way to the wharf. I apologize for my wheezing, he gasped. I haven't had a run like that in a long time. Usually I'm cramped up in the steamworks and rarely go on journeys like this. Victoria laughed. You're so wonderful, Victor. Taking time out of your day to show me around. I know I'll get to see everything again when I'm repaired, but I'll never get to see it from these tracks. Just then, Scarloe puffed in. Mind if I borrow your coach, Victor? Turns out I've got more passengers than I was expecting, and she would fit in very nicely with the rest of my train. What do you say, Victoria? Want to be a part of a Scarloe railway train? I don't know, she murmured. I haven't been maintained in years. Do you think the passengers will mind my dirty seats and peeling paint? Nonsense. When they realize you're an original vintage coach, they'll be lining up just for a chance to see you. At the station, the passengers flocked to Victoria, just like Scarloe predicted. When the guard's whistle blew, the train departed, and for the first time in many years, Victoria was part of an entourage. She was extremely happy. Thank you so much for today, Victor, she said that night. I must admit, I enjoyed your narrow-gauge railway more than I expected. I'm not sure where I'll end up after I'm restored, but I'll try to stop by as often as I can. The next day, Victoria had been mended, and she was sent away to a different part of the island. Victor was sad to see her go. Hey, boss. I'm sorry I didn't show up to work yesterday. I wasn't feeling too great, and I know you're probably going to be very upset. But I promise, I'll work harder than I've ever worked before. I'll make up for lost time. I'll do... All right, that's enough. In fact, I think it was a very good thing you got a day to rest. You probably won't believe it, but I took a break myself, and it was wonderful. Kevin smiled. No way, boss. You never stop, ever. You've always got another project to work on. But the workmen vouched for Victor's story. We pretty much told him he had to leave, or else we would, they laughed. Doesn't it feel nice to get out and do something different once in a while? Indeed, and you never know what journeys are out there until you take the time to look for them. I know I work a lot, and so do all of you, but sometimes you really do need a break. And, since we've all had the chance to rest, we're ready and raring to get back to work. That's the spirit, Kevin. Well, let's see where to start. Oh my, Stanley, what has happened to you? Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 237, Knock It Off, Stanley. Rosie's recent makeover had been a big success. Everywhere she went, the engines couldn't believe their former pink friend was now bright red and raring to go. The engines in the yard especially took notice. You know, I've been thinking, and, and believe me, this was way in my head before Rosie ever mentioned it, so don't think I'm copying her. You want to go get a makeover too? asked Billy. Yes, I really, really do. Look at her. Everyone's always so excited to see her and talk to her. She's much more productive as well. She shunts like a million trains a day. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be like her. Stafford rolled his eyes. Philip, you don't need to go do something like that. There's no other engine on the railway like you. Remember when those mainland diesels tried to get you to repaint yourself? Going around trying to be something you're not will only get you into trouble. But strangely, Philip's words began to have an effect on Stanley. Over the next few days, he became obsessed with going to the works and changing something about him. Maybe if my dome was a little bit shinier, he whispered, or if my bunker was bigger, then I could go on longer journeys. 
Maybe Victor could replace my wheels with some stronger ones. Then I could shunt bigger and heavier trains. The next day, he saw Sir Topham Hatt in the yard. Ooh, ooh, hello, sir. I have something very urgent to ask you. Oh, yes. Hello, Stanley. What is it? Well, you see, it's a bit of a strange request. Recently, I've been feeling rather down, and, and I was thinking and, and wondering and hoping that I could go to the steamworks and maybe get a few parts and pieces replaced. It is almost time for my annual checkup. Sir Topham Hatt stared blankly back. We don't do annual checkups, Stanley. What is this all about? Well, I think, I think I might have a crack in one of my wheels. Maybe Victor should take a look at them. Sir Topham Hatt looked around. None of your wheels looked cracked to me. But you are getting old, sir. I beg your pardon. I, I mean, your eyesight. It isn't what it used to be. Perhaps I should go to Victor for a second opinion? Oh, fine. Just make sure. But then there was trouble. Help, sir! Help! Oh, no! Winston! Um, Stanley, we'll pick this conversation up later. Winston, hang on! Stanley was very happy. Perfect. Now it's off to the Steamworks for a new makeover. But when Stanley arrived, Victor was nowhere to be found. I swear, if I don't get out of here in the next few days... Hey, Vinny, have you seen Victor recently? Oh, he just left with a new coach or something. I tell ya, I've been here. Yeah, that's great and all. Is, is Kevin around? I have some urgent repairs that need to be administered right away. No, that Kevin kid ain't here. But guess what? I'm in charge of the steamworks. Stanley laughed. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Nice one, Vinny. No, I'm serious. Before Victor left, he put me in charge. Right, fellas? Yes, but there you have it. I'm in charge of the Steamworks. Now what seems to be the matter? Stanley wasn't so sure. Vinny doesn't know anything about giving upgrades to engines. But Victor is such a stickler, and I don't think he would approve anything I wanted to do. Oh well, I guess this is my shot. Stanley began to explain what he wanted. Oh, so some cosmetic repairs. Gotcha. I've been hanging around this joint for so long that I know just what Victor would do in a situation like this. We'll even give you a number. How does that sound? That's wonderful. Look out, Sodor. Rosie isn't going to be the only fresh new engine on the railway. Vinny had the workmen start on Stanley right away. In no time at all, the modifications were complete. Well, how do I look? Marvelous, I tell ya, marvelous. Boy, Vinny, you sure did a good job. You've got a knack for this design and thing. The workmen, on the other hand, were not so convinced. Listen, Stanley, this has been fun and all, but we better get you back to looking the way you were before. Why? What's wrong? I don't look too different, just a few changes here and there. It's no more than what Victor did to Rosie. Fine, go out there, Stanley, but we warned you. Great, time for Sodor to meet the new Stanley. He'll be back in 30 minutes, mark my words. Meanwhile, Stanley was excited to show his friends what he looked like. This will catch them by surprise, I know it will. Hey, Stanley. We were wondering where you went. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Stanley, you, you look completely different. Yes, Rosie, I know. I saw how successful your makeover was and decided to go get one myself. But Stafford was horrified. Stanley, did Victor do this with his eyes closed? Oh, come on. It's not that bad. Look, here comes Philip. He doesn't mince words. He'll tell me exactly how I look. Hey, Philip. 
Oh no! Stanley's been injured in a horrible accident! We must get you off to the steamworks for repairs immediately! Stanley blinked slowly. Okay, maybe a few changes need to be made. Oh, knock it off, Stanley. It hurts me to say this, but I'm your friend, and friends don't let each other run around looking like... like this. I'm sorry, but you don't look very good. I don't know what happened at the Steamworks, but you need to go back there and ask for a refund. The Steamworks did this to you? Oh my word! Why, Victor would take out his frustrations on an engine I will never know. Stanley began to realize his makeover had been a complete failure. Oh, bother, he groaned. I was only trying to be different. After you got a new coat of paint, I figured I could look something like that too. I guess it was a bad idea to let Vinny handle this. Vinny was behind this? Well, that makes a lot more sense. I knew Victor wouldn't do this to an engine on purpose. Stanley puffed sadly away to the steamworks. It was morning when he arrived. Oh my, Stanley, what has happened to you? Never mind, we must fix this right away. Sorry, Victor. I guess I got caught up in trying to make myself look better. Now I've wasted all this time and parts and pieces. No worries, my friend. Fortunately, the damage isn't too bad. My workmen will return you to your former self in no time. And Victor was right. Since Vinny didn't know what he was doing, the old changes were quickly erased and Stanley was back to being himself in no time. Let this be a lesson to you. You're fine just the way you are. But, if you ever do feel the itch to try something new, come find me or Kevin, not him. Aw, and I was thinking I did a good job, too. Stanley was feeling much better, and he quickly puffed back to the yard where his friends were waiting. It's good to have you back, Stanley. The real Stanley. You got that right. I don't know what I was thinking, but thank you for telling me it was wrong as soon as you did. I couldn't imagine running around the railway looking like that for everyone to see. Let's keep this disaster between the four of us, okay? The engines happily agreed. They were beyond thrilled to have Stanley back and looking like a proper Sodor engine. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 238, Throw Topham from the Train. Sir Topham Hatt's personal track vehicle, Winston, had been damaged in a freak accident at the coal depot and needed major repairs. If I had to guess, he'll be gone for a while, sir. They'll need to fix the windshield, front lights, pull out all those bumps and dents... Oh, bother. Well, we haven't got a moment to lose. I will miss you terribly, Winston, but I know you'll be back before we know it. Winston managed a smile, but it was still a rather ungraceful way to leave for the works. How will you get around the railway now, sir? asked Percy. Well, I'm... I'm not sure, to be quite honest, but there are many methods of transportation out there. I'm sure I will find one to my liking. I might even hop aboard one of your trains if I feel like it. But the engines weren't so sure. I don't believe that would be wise, sir. You are the controller of the railway, after all. Riding along like a common passenger, it, it just doesn't suit you. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. But I did it for years, and still do it occasionally when time permits. Are you all saying you don't want me to ride on board your trains anymore? The engines looked at one another. It's not that we don't enjoy your company, sir. It's just you deserve something more luxurious. What, like a private engine or something? That could work, amused Gordon. There are very few reasons why I give up my express, but that type of job would be very tempting. 
Sir Topham Hatt was stumped. I never realized the controller of one of the greatest railways ever should ride in style. Very well then, I'll consider it. The next day, Sir Topham Hatt went to Ulfstead Castle. Ah, Stephen, just the engine I was looking for. I know you have a lot of duties here on the castle property, but I was wondering if you would be interested in being my private engine, just until Winston returns. Stephen was flattered, but he had to say no. The castle demands too much of an engine like me. If I left, things would fall into disarray. The vines wouldn't be trimmed, the statues would go unpolished, the estate grounds would plunge into anarchy. Okay, maybe not that last bit, but I can't leave Ulfstead, I'm afraid. Bother, I was hoping for an engine of your regard. But may I make a suggestion, sir? What about Neil over there? He's an old chap like myself and probably runs at the same speed. Why not give him the chance? Sir Topham Hatt smiled. That could work. Let's give it a shot. Yes, hello there, Neil. I have a very important question to ask you. What? Who's there? It's... it's me, Neil. Neil squinted. Who are you? I'm Sir Topham Hatt, the controller of the Northwestern Railway. Oh, I understand. Glad to make your acquaintance, sir. Yes, well, we've met many times before. Now, I have a job for you, Neil. I'm looking for an engine to take me around Sodor wherever I am needed. It's only a temporary job, but it's still very important. But Neil had fallen asleep again. Ahem! <laughs> ah, Neil, as I was saying, you're going to be my private engine. Oh, very good, sir. Say, what's your name again? Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Let's get cracking on this, shall we? But Neil was a very different engine than Sir Topham Hatt was used to. He was old and fussy, and that wasn't even his personality. He made lots of weird noises and galloped along the rails at the speed of a tortoise. Worst of all, his open cab sent cinders into the air and Sir Topham Hatt stepped off the platform covered in ash. On second thought, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Keep doing whatever it is you do on my railway, Neil. Looks like I'll have to keep searching. What? he cried. This is a lot harder than I imagined. All of my engines have very important jobs on the railway, and they don't have time to chauffeur me around. Turns out I needed Winston more than I could have ever imagined. Just then, Stepney puffed in. He was pulling a nice, big, shiny coach. Sir Topham Hatt had had enough. This is preposterous. I am Sir Topham Hatt, and if I want to ride in a coach, then I will do so. As the passengers disembarked, Sir Topham Hatt walked up to the platform and attempted to board. Whoa, said the station master. Where do you think you're going, old man? Old man? Well, I've never. Everyone must have a ticket to board this train, and I don't see one on you. My word, how inconvenient. Do you know who I am? The two men looked at each other. Someone who clearly thinks tailcoats are still in fashion, they chuckled. Sir Topham Hatt was appalled. I am the controller of the Northwestern Railway, he boomed. The two men gasped. You're Sir Topham Hatt? Yes, precisely. Now if you'll excuse me. But he didn't get any further. Can you believe it? This old man, covered in soot, is trying to fool us into thinking he's Sir Topham Hatt. What a lark! The controller of the railway would never be caught riding on one of his trains looking this dirty and disheveled. And he would never carry his own umbrella. He would have one of his assistants do that, of course. There's not even any rain in the forecast. And they spilled into laughter. Sir Topham Hatt was most annoyed. No, you don't. Well, I, I carry the umbrella because... Oh, what's the point? 
They're right. I certainly don't look the part. Listen, listen. We'll let you onto the train if you buy a ticket. That's all you have to do. All right, fine. Yes, now let's see. A one-way first-class route to Natford is... What? That's the cost of a train ticket? Ho ho, you won't be getting that kind of money from me. What's going on back there? asked Stepney. Is everything all right? But Sir Topham Hatt didn't say a word. He was dirty, embarrassed, and he certainly didn't feel like a controller. He managed to flag Bulgy down near the station and was eventually dropped off at Natford at the end of the day. Hello, sir, said Edward. How was your first day without Winston? Oh, it was disastrous. I was kicked off of a train on my own railway for not looking the part, and I had to convince Bulgy to take me here instead. To make matters worse, I'm absolutely famished and need something from M.C. Bunn. Actually, sir, they closed a few minutes ago. Oh, could this day get any worse? That's it. I've had enough of trying to get around my railway the way I want to. It's time to look at other methods of transportation. I can't be humiliated again like I was today. The engines had an idea. What about a car, sir? suggested Oliver. Yes, didn't you used to have one back in the day? It was blue, I believe. Yes, I did. It was convenient and all, but it kept breaking down, so I got rid of it. Besides, I wanted to ride on your trains to support you all, and then Winston came along. But maybe it is time to go down that road again. Well, if you're looking for a fast yellow one, I know of a slick coop that's been impounded at the repair yard. Sir Topham Hatt's face lit up. Why, that's it! I'll put Ace to good use, and I'll be able to get around my railway whenever and wherever I feel like it. Thank you for your help, everyone. And Sir Topham Hatt walked away, hopefully for the last time for the foreseeable future. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 239, Ace in the Hole. The next morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the repair yard. Wake up, Ace. It's time to be rehabilitated. Re rehabil what he groaned. He's all yours, sir, said the workman. We've kept him in perfect working order. He just needs someone to teach him the basic rules of road safety. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. Looks like that will be a job for me. Come on, Ace. We're going to transform you from a speed demon to a really useful and safe automobile. Ace groaned. This was not his idea of a good time. Sir Topham Hatt stepped inside. All right, you're going to be my personal car until Winston returns from being mended. In the meantime, you must learn... Whoa! Ace roared away and sped through the crossing right in front of Daisy. He was skidding all over the road and had jumped over several lines of track. He swerved to a stop near the main line. Yeah, woohoo! It feels great to be back on the road again. Sir Topham Hatt stepped out and slammed the door. I will not teach you how to be a proper Sodor vehicle if you keep up with that behavior. It is very dangerous to drive over the track where there isn't a level crossing. If you do not behave, I will take you right back to the repair yard. And don't think I'm joking. Just ask Bolstrode here what happens if you don't follow the rules. Ace was embarrassed. He realized that showing off in front of Sir Topham Hatt was not the best idea. Right then, I need to go to Brendam Docks and I want you to take me there as fast as I can go. No, no, I want to go there slowly and safely. Ace was disappointed. I'm a race car. Why can't I go fast? Because I don't like racing on my railway. Now, let's go to the docks, slow and steady, like a normal car. Sir Topham Hatt climbed in and Ace rolled his eyes. 
Although we didn't want to, he drove carefully all the way to Brendam Docks. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? In fact, you drive a lot like the first lorry I ever had. Oh, what was her name again? Ah, look at this. The siding has finally been repaired. How are things here, Porter? Everything is tip-top, sir. We just had our last international engine leave on a boat just a few minutes ago. Sir Topham Hack gasped. Vinny has finally gone home? Oh, sorry, not him. He's still at the works, I think. I was talking about Ashima. Do you remember her? Anyway, a boat finally came and picked her up after all this time. Ah, right. Ashima was a nice engine. Hopefully she'll be back again someday. But you are right about Vinny. He's still at the works, and he's still driving Victor and Kevin crazy from what I hear. Sir Topham Hatt and Porter laughed. Ace was growing impatient. Well, I have some work to attend to, Ace, so I will be a while. Now, I don't expect you to stay put while I am busy, but I do expect you to behave yourself wherever you go. Meet me back here in exactly one hour. Ace smiled. He happily zoomed away from Sir Topham Hatt's oppressive gaze. Where to go? Where to go? I have the whole island to explore. Hmm, that works place sounds interesting. Wonder if they could hook me up with some juice so I could go even faster. But when Ace arrived, though, he was very disappointed. Oh, this works is only for steam engines. What a waste of my time. No, no, no. You don't know anything about wasting time. I've been here for weeks, months maybe, and I'm just getting out of here. Talk about slow service, am I right? Ace smiled. You're, you're Vinny, aren't you? I just heard that Sir Topham Hatfella talking about you. Vinny blushed. Oh, really? What did he say? Did he tell you all about my impressive shunting skills? No, he said you're crazy and annoying to deal with. Well, that's rude. If I had half a mind, I'd march over to that fat controller guy and give him a piece of my mind. But I don't got no time for that. I'm finally getting out of the steamworks here, and I'm determined to make it home as quick as possible. Ace perked up. Getting home as quick as possible? You sound just like me. Where you headed, mate? We should team up. Vinny smiled. That sounds like a great plan. Now, there are only two ways off of this island, either by boat or over the Vickerstown Bridge. And I made an oath to never, ever go near the Vickerstown Bridge after my last accident. But I'm so sick of waiting for a ship to come get me that I've changed my mind. You want to come to the mainland with me? Do I ever? This place is so lame. And Sir Topham Hatt is right up my exhaust about driving slow and staying safe. He's had me impounded forever. And now that I've got my chance to escape, I'm not going to spoil it. Right on. Looks like we aren't too different after all. You're good to go, Vinny, said the workman. We've topped you off with coal and water. At last. See ya, suckers. I'm making a sprint for the mainland. You want a piece of the action? You know it, but I'll be honest, I haven't driven fast in a long time, and I don't know if my engine's up for it. Would you be willing to give me some help? Sure thing. Hop on board these rails and I'll push you along. Nobody can stop us now. Here we go! Back at the docks, Sir Topham Hatt had finished his work, and he was waiting for Ace to return. Hmm, on second thought... Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to let Ace run around Sodor on his own. Who knows what trouble he could get into. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt heard a screaming noise, and Ace and Vinny rushed through. Faster, faster, yelled Ace. I don't know where I'm going, cried Vinny. Where's the bridge? What was that, cried Porter. I'm afraid that's an accident waiting to happen, sighed Sir Topham Hatt. Best I go alert the search and rescue center. Meanwhile, Ace and Vinny were still lost and out of control. There's the yard. I think we're close. 
No, wait, this is the wrong side of the island. Look out! And the two smashed into some buffers and flipped into a nasty, smelly ditch. Ace and Vinny were both heavily damaged. Nice going, genius. Look at where we ended up. Like I had any control as to where we were going. This wasn't my fault, you big oaf. Eventually, Sir Topham had arrived with the search and rescue team. His new car was now destroyed. Well, that lasted a day, murmured Thomas. I should have known better than to let a convict run free on his first day out. And now Vinny needs to go back to the steamworks and be repaired again, said Philip. What? No, no, I won't go back. I can't do it again. No, let me go, please, please, ah! Sir Topham Hatt rolled his eyes and walked over to Ace. I had hoped you would become a civilized automobile, but I suppose once a race car, always a race car. Am I right? Ace grinned sheepishly. You could say so, I bet. As punishment for disobeying my orders and creating this entire mess, I have decided to... But Sir Topham Hatt trailed off. He turned around and walked behind the sheds. What? What's going on? asked Bell. Where is he going? added Flynn. Sir Topham Hatt stopped walking and smiled. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 240, Finding Lori. I can't believe it, said Sir Topham Hatt. After all these years, you forgot about me, screeched an angry Lori. Now, Elizabeth, dear. Oh, so you remember my name, but you couldn't remember where you parked me. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. It was an honest mistake, I assure you. The early years on the railway were quite hectic, and I may have forgotten a few things along the way. Let's not restart on bad terms, shall we? Elizabeth tried to be mad, but she couldn't. Her crotchety scowl eventually broke into a happy smile. Oh, it is nice to see you again, Topham. We have so much to catch up on. But first, any reason why engines and automobiles are crashing through the buffers on your railway? Oh, that's Ace. He's, uh, learning to drive safely, I think. Elizabeth wasn't impressed. I would have thought you'd have more control of things by now. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Well, some things never change, do they? Meanwhile, the engines were growing impatient. What's going on? asked James. I hear some talking, but can't see anything. It sounds like Sir Topham Hatt is arguing with someone. Can you see anything, Butch? It's hard to see behind Sir Topham Hatt's, well, his top hat. And I don't want to intrude. It seems like a very personal moment. But there's this maroon-colored lorry. The engines gasped. The horrid lorries are back. Well, no, not that I can tell. It appears there's only one. Well, of course, they've split up. They're trying to divide and conquer, just like last time. I don't believe it, murmured Belle. The horrid lorries have been hiding out on Sodor while they've been planning their next big plot against the railway. And Sir Topham Hatt just found one hiding behind the sheds. He's sure to make an example of him. I just know it. We must alert the other engines. Who knows? This could mean the return of... No, you don't think, gasped Percy. There's no time to lose, proclaimed Arthur. Go, go, go! And just like that, the engines were away. Great news, everyone. You'll never believe who I found behind the sheds. Oh, where has everyone gone? The news spread quickly around the railway. The horrid lorries are back. Sir Topham Hatt just found one hiding behind Knapford's sheds. They're probably working with Sailor John again. 
I bet Bowler's involved this time. He was just on the railway, you know. Maybe the railway inspector's back and looking for revenge. It was pure hysteria. Engines abandoned their trains. Road vehicles crashed into one another. The passengers fled from the stations. In the ensuing chaos, the search and rescue center was put on high alert. Something big is about to happen, said Bell, and we'll be ready at a moment's notice. Meanwhile, Sir Topham Hatt was very concerned to find the yard empty. I wonder where all of my engines went, he murmured. They would be very delighted to meet you. Elizabeth looked around. Your railway is a lot bigger and grander than I remember. I have to admit, Topham, you've done very well. You probably don't need an old fusspot like me anymore. Nonsense! You may not believe it, but I have actually been looking for a new way to get around the island. That yellow car back there, Ace, was a potential candidate, but he has a bit of a mean streak in him. Elizabeth chuckled. He's too flashy. Looks aren't everything, you know. You need something bigger and sturdier. Potentially, but it will only be temporary. I have a track inspection vehicle that is being repaired right now. Fine by me, like I would want to haul you around everywhere you need to go. No thanks. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled. This might work out after all. Come on, let's see where all of my engines have run off to. Unbeknownst to Sir Topham Hatt, the engines had gathered at Tidmouth Sheds for an urgent meeting. This is very troubling, said Gordon. Those lorries have always been difficult, but I thought we dealt with them for the last time. They're back, and most likely stronger than ever, said Henry. Think of all the time they've spent plotting and scheming up their next plan. We should have been expecting this. We should really find out where Sir Topham Hatt is. He'll know what to do in a situation like this. If we can find him, whispered Percy. Maybe the lorries have captured him already. Thomas was becoming a bit frustrated. Let's not get too carried away. Just then, Duck Puff did. All of the trains have been canceled for the rest of the day. The Little Western and other branch lines around the island are standing by for Sir Topham Hatt's instructions. Wait, all of the trains have been stopped? Isn't that a bit wonderful, said Gordon. With no trains to pull, we can focus our attention at the issue at hand. And what issue would that be, said Sir Topham Hatt. There you are, sir, cried the engines. Hooray, you're safe, exclaimed Percy. Yes, of course I am. I mean, what are you talking about? We know about the lorry, sir, said Edward, the one behind Knapford Sheds. Oh, really? Well, I was hoping to surprise you all. No, no, sir. We've taken the necessary precautions and have alerted the entire island to the lorry's presence. Hmm, seems a bit excessive. And we are awaiting your next instructions, sir, said James. Oh, well, I don't really have any instructions to give you. Just carry on as usual, I suppose. The engines looked at one another. But... Sir, this is a big deal, isn't it? I suppose so, but this railway has had bigger surprises. So you just want us to go back to pulling our trains, like normal? Yes, I would very much appreciate that, considering it's the middle of the day and you are all at the sheds here. I'm sure the passengers are wondering where their trains are. Oh, the, uh, the trains have been cancelled, sir, out of pure abundance of caution. We figured you would understand with a situation of this magnitude. Sir Topham Hatt was growing suspicious. You know, I'm not really sure I do understand anymore. Finding an old lorry behind some sheds is not worthy of shutting down the railway, is it? The engines eyed each other. 
But this lorry, whispered Percy, is a horrid lorry, sir. I'm a what? cried Elizabeth. Oh, gasped the engines, who's that? Did you call me horrid? Well, in all my years, to be insulted by a green-looking caterpillar such as yourself. Horrid, gasped Sir Topham Hat. Caterpillar, whimpered Percy. All right, that's enough, cried Thomas. I think there has been some confusion here. Looks like the horrid lorries have found a new recruit, said Henry. No, this is not a horrid lorry. This is my lorry. Her name is Elizabeth, and she was the very first vintage truck I owned many years ago. I found her behind Natford's sheds after Ace and Vinny's crash. The engines looked at one another. So, the horrid lorries aren't actually here? Topham, what is their fascination with these lorries that are so horrid? That's Sir Topham hat to you, snapped Duck. Ah, it's Sir. The humble fellow never mentioned that to me. The engines realized they had made a mistake. So, this is the lorry that was behind the sheds? asked Edward. Yes, exactly. During my early years as controller of the railway, I must have parked her back there and forgot about me, finished Elizabeth. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Kinda like being locked up and forgotten in a tunnel, eh, Henry? Sir Topham Hatch shook his head. You all thought my lorry was one of the horrid lorries, didn't you? And you freaked out and stopped the trains and brought this island to a standstill over a baseless rumor? The engines looked around nervously. We may have made a mistake, sir, said Percy. But we did know you were arguing with the maroon-colored lorry behind the sheds, and, well... Sir Topham Hat managed to chuckle. Right, I can see how you might have thought what you did. I suppose I am equally at fault for not clarifying what exactly my discovery was. Sorry, sir. We may have jumped at this a little too quick. But with everything that's happened in the past, and especially with Bowler having returned to Sodor recently, we were only trying to put a stop to something bad as quick as we could. And for that, you should all be commended. Unfortunately, this mistake has caused confusion and delay. I'm sure of it. I think it's best we move on and get back to doing our jobs, right? The engines wholeheartedly agreed and set back to work. It had been an embarrassing slip-up, but surprisingly, Elizabeth was impressed with what she saw. Those engines really respect you, Topham, she said. It appears you continue to face challenges just like you had to back in the day, and these engines certainly have your back. I am very proud of you. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. He was pleased that he had found Elizabeth, that his engines were willing to stand up to intruders on his railway, and he was very happy that there were no horrid lorries lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again.